Hi guys, Mac, Double Tap. Uh, one of the uh, things I see a lot on uh, the questions forms are how to take your engravings or your inlays on your you know, pistols, rifles, whatever, and color them. So I uh, kind of want to do a little quick video on that and uh, show you how I do it anyway. I mean, I know there's a bunch of different ways. Mine seems to last pretty okay. Uh, so we'll get on to it. What you want to do, and I get this stuff, I mean, honestly, if you buy bottles this size of um, paint, the paint will dry out long before you color every gun you have, I promise you. Uh, or I do. I mean, it. you aren't going to use hardly any. Uh, like in this case, we're going to do the, you know, the fire control group on an AR-15 with uh, white, red, and red. And uh, you, you, you use drops. Uh, so let's get to it. Uh, I'm going to start with the white because I like to give it a little bit more time to dry. Uh, so... This is enamel paint. It takes about an hour to dry and several days to cure. So, uh, with that being said, all you're going to do is we're going to get just a little. I mean, when I say a little, I mean a little on that end of that. I'm trying to do this with through the camera and there's no depth perception but uh so here i'm gonna hold this up here so and i just put it in there and kind of i use a needle because i don't want to get more than i really need i mean you need to fill up the the crevices but you don't want to get an enormous amount of paint on there you want to give it a you know, just kind of work it in to all the nooks, little cracks and crevices. And you can do this on logos. You can do this on anything you want. But you can do this on anything you want. And then you just kind of, I just keep scraping the excess off and rubbing it, wiping it off on a towel. And uh, try and get it to where I can kind of see the surface underneath. I said in my last video I am without my normal camera tripod set up it broke so I am uh, really at the mercy of doing this with a cell phone camera and I apologize but as you can see I'm working it down in I'm kind of trying to get the the excess off the out, outer lying areas you know the places I'm not trying to cover and uh, once you get that good and worked in there, the uh, you go ahead and let it dry for a little bit of time. You can take your uh, paper towel and wipe it off real quick. Uh, a little bit of time to dry, and then. Uh, Take your paper towel and pull it away. Now, we're not, I don't know, let me try turning the, the flash off here. Uh, it doesn't want to turn off. Uh, brightness settings so uh, as you can see I've got the inside of it good and colored and I've got all this residue here but I'm gonna leave that because I don't want it to uh, I don't want it to uh, when I wipe that off I don't want it I want to give this inside the whole the the grooves time to dry so in the meantime while that's doing its thing 
Uh, we're going to move on to the red. And the same process, exact same process, same kind of paint uh, on red. But you just get a little bit on the end of your pen there. And just kind of work it into the hole. Uh, doesn't take much, obviously. So get that worked in there. And now what we can do is kind of scrape that off and put it on this one. And two for the price of one, right? Now, the one thing you do want to try and avoid is cross-contamination between your colors. You know, I don't want my red and my white, as I'm cleaning it up, to contaminate each other. Uh, so you don't really want it to... Uh, cross-contaminate each other so work on one then work on your other colors but as you're cleaning them up that's kind of the the really important time to uh, make sure you don't get red in the white and white and the red or whatever colors you happen to be doing uh, so you just kind of work it in and you see you can see how I'm scraping it off the metal, and I, you can hear it, I think. At least I can. And now it's going, uh, you know, as you see the lines emerge or the, the numbers emerge, you can, you know, you got your crack of your, uh, the engrave full completely coated and then uh, we're just going to give that the opportunity to dry uh, here in a second we'll just kind of again wiping away from the white because I don't want to get any paint on where I have the white already Again, I'm going to, I'm getting it off there, but see, I already went over, I kind of got a little bit of the, uh, I don't know what that is, kind of get a little bit of the red out of that, the, uh, the groove, so I'm just going to put a little bit more back in there, it wasn't quite ready to, uh, wipe off yet, or uh, more to the point, I wiped it off a little too hard, it's hard, kind of hard to do this, and when you wipe that off, almost no pressure, you just use the weight of, you know, the paper towel or whatever you're doing to uh, get the uh, to get the uh, the excess off that gives you the ability to leave or retain the most amount of paint as you can in the holes uh, again I'm pulling the paint off the one etching and putting it on the other one in this case, so as to not you know, getting way too much paint on, you know, that you all have, you have to clean it all off. So, that is way more better than, so, there we got both sides, uh, you know, it in drying mode. And I let it, you know, try and let it dry 10 or 15 minutes anyway. If we go over here to the other side, this is what I've already done. Now, uh, 
this, I've obviously left the, the smear on it, and I've already cleaned them ones up. So, how you're going to take the smear off after it's good and dry, and this has been drying, yeah, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. You don't have to go with the drying times that are on the, uh, your can as far as, or on the material as far as how long you let, how have to let that paint dry simply because you're putting it on so thin. And uh, so what we're going to do here is just good old fashioned hops number nine Sullivan. Uh, just get a little bit on your egg. And I mean a little bit. In fact, I'm, I poured through on one side. Uh, I'm changing hands again. And uh, we're just going to lightly, gently, and try, again, not to contaminate the red with the white. Just going to dab at it. And uh, let the solvent do what solvents do, which is... Keep going over it. Um, pull that excess little bit of white off. Uh, obviously, the uh, the solvent's not gonna hurt your rifle in any way. It's hot, and uh, so just take your. A little bit of solvent and work on your areas that you've overpainted or wiped the paint into actually. And it really doesn't. Yeah. Once that solvent evaporates from the part that you painted down in there, uh, it will definitely turn this light down a little bit more. And it will definitely. Let them shine as far as, uh, I know it looks like there's white in here, but there's not. And I've got it all off, maybe a little bit on either the edges. But I'll play with that when I can kind of fine tune it with my eyeballs. But, uh, and we go back over here now, that's, you know, that's, I, 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 I haven't edited the video, so. That's how longer it's been off. There. And we're just going to do the, the same thing over here. Like I said, the biggest thing when you're doing multiple colors is try not to contaminate the uh, the uh, you know the red and the white. So I'm going to completely do this white one and try and get all of the excess paint off, and then I'll go back through the red. I'm putting a little bit of down pressure on there. Not much. Uh, but just enough to... And now I am, quite honestly. Uh, I want to get all that excess off. And the more that you can clean off with the... Uh, with the needle and the less you leave on the outer lying edges the less work this becomes uh, I really took my time when I did them red ones on the other side and uh, there was hardly any cleanup around now and, and, uh, yeah, it's really starting to so don't use the red rag on the white side or the white white rag on the red side. They were even especially with white paper towel, you're not going to see how contaminated the white was. Uh, you'll see it on this red paper towel how fast it contaminates the entire paper towel, and we don't want to. Uh, look, I've got a little bit more. Come on, focus. I've got a little bit more around that one. But I'm going to go ahead and try and get this red uh, 
get this red cleaned up a little bit. So, like I said, it's important to me now is not to contaminate the white with red paint. Uh, and man, that red just cleaned up way easier. See how quickly it contaminated our top. That red is just done. I don't know if it has something to do with uh, how the red's made versus the white. But the red, it, the red just cleans up super, super easy comparatively. And uh, man, that looked turned out really good. So there it is in a nutshell. That's how you do it. Works on pistol slides, rifles, whatever. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit more time, you know, and clean up the white one on that side. The, uh, I'm pretty happy. I'll let it dry a little bit more and go over the white on that one one more time as well. Uh, that's it. That's how you do it. Appreciate you guys watching. Like, share, and subscribe. And uh, this is obviously going to turn into a gun in the near future. Uh, piece by piece, step by step. So come on back and see what we're building here. Appreciate it. Have a good day.